Hey, what's up people? It's Damola from The Creative Earner and on this channel what I do is to give you practical insights, tips and ways to help you achieve your financial dreams and goals. And today what I'm going to be doing is I'll be showing you and walking you through how to open an investment account with Vanguard. So we'll be going on the Vanguard website and I'll be taking you through and I'll show you everything what you need to know on how to open an investment ISA account with Vanguard. I will show you what you need to know to pick the index funds or the ETFs that you would like to invest in and also maybe the life strategies if that's of interest to you and we'll be looking into all of those details one after the other. Let's dive right into it. All right, before we proceed to Vanguard website, I think there are some concepts that you need to understand before we actually go on in this particular exercise. And these concepts are that of understanding what a stock is, what an index fund is, what an ETF is, what a mutual fund is, um, and things like that. Although having said that, I've already made a video that I think you can benefit of, and I would put the link right up there and also in the description below. I already did a video for stock market for beginners, and uh, I explained a lot of concepts, what you need to, to know in detail in that particular video, and I believe that it's going to help you so much. So. I think you might want to take a pause on this video and actually go look straight into it or you can do that at the end of this video as well. Also, I already talked about for the four UK ISAs, I explained each of them, what they are and how you can benefit from those four UK ISAs because we're going to be opening one here um, in a few moments and I think you can begin to understand more from that as well. So, all right, so what is a stock? That's the first thing I think we need to know. Even though we're not going to be buying a stock directly, um, the ordinary or the traditional stock everybody talks about, maybe like that of Apple, Tesla, Microsoft or Facebook, that is not what we're going to be doing here on Vanguard website, but I think it's just good to know so that we can refresh um, our understanding. Now, if you're buying a stock of a company, basically what you're buying is you're buying a unit ownership of that company. Basically, you become a shareholder of that company. Now, there are different stocks, again, based on the organizations or the companies you wish to buy their stock. And once you buy their stock, now you have shares in that company. You have shares in that organization. So let's say you buy 10 units of Tesla shares. Now, whatever the amount of that shares is, now as that goes up or down, because you are investing into the stock market, your returns will also go up and down as well. So basically, a share is simply a unit ownership in a company, in an organization, and it doesn't matter where that company is. It could be in the UK, it could be in the US, it could be somewhere in Asia. Um, technology has made all of these things very simple and you can begin to benefit from that. All right, so what is an index fund? An index fund is simply a collection, a group of stocks of various companies that you can buy at a low cost. Now, for example, cost of a Tesla share, the value of a Tesla share is going for around, roughly around about $1,500, right? So if you want to buy or invest in Tesla, you will need $1,500 to have one unit um, share of ownership in Tesla. However, having said that, you can also do something that is called fractional shares. So you don't have to buy a whole unit of $1,500, you can say, okay, all I have is half of that, which is 750 or even a quarter of that, whatever percentage you want to buy, um, fractional shares helps you, allows you to buy that. And you can easily do that um, on an app like Trading212. But that is not what I'm going today. But for index funds, because that is what we're going to be looking to um, invest our money into on Vanguard, index fund is simply a collection of different organizations or different companies, their stocks. And instead of you buying, so say your 1,500, instead of you putting it into Tesla shares, you can put your entire 1,500 pounds or dollars, whatever the currency, you can put it into a particular index fund. Basically what an index fund does is an index fund is tracking an index. There are several indexes that are available out there. I can't even begin to name them, but one of the most popular ones um, is the S&P S &P 500, basically the Standard & Poor's 500 in the US. And basically that is the that constitutes the 500 largest company, the largest market capitalization, market cap, in the US, so you'll be investing into all of those 
companies. Okay, I think I said enough of that. If you need more information, please check out my video, um, Stock Market for Beginners, and you would get a lot of information from that. Now, ETFs is similar to an index fund, right? And is also another passive one. But the major difference here is, as opposed to the index fund that cannot be traded during the day, um, ETFs can be traded during the day. And that's exactly what they mean. It's called exchange traded funds. So you can invest in that and trade it like a normal stock and hey, Bob's your uncle, off you go. So if you need more information regarding stocks, mutual fund, whatever it is, I've already captured that in that video and you can benefit a lot from that. All right, let's dive right into Vanguard. So when you go to the website, vanguardinvestor.co.uk, it will bring you to this site. So They've got the life strategy funds, the target retirement funds, the index and active funds, and the ETFs, which are the exchange traded funds. Right, so let's go into the life strategy funds. Basically, all you have to do here is it presents you with five matching funds. So they've got about five of them. So they've got life strategy, 20% equity fund, 40% equity fund, 60%, 80%, and 100%. Basically, 20% here means that 20% of this fund is equity and 80% of this fund is bonds, all right? Again, equity is simply just shares or stocks, right? And the bonds, bonds are simply money you loan to government or certain organizations, all right? And you paid some interest on your investment. So you've got 20% equity, 80% bonds. Here it means 40% equity, 60% bonds. Now, there is a rule of thumb here depending on your age. So let's say you are age 30, for example, the rule of thumb says um, 100 minus 30 is 70%. So you should be investing 70% of your money into equity and maybe 30% into bonds. If you're 40, then 100 minus 40, you should be investing 60% um, into equity and that will fit around here and 40% on bonds. In fact, because of life expectancy is now going higher, now that 100 has been moved to 110. Even some people are doing 120. So again, depending on how you feel about that, or when you uh, intend on retiring, you can make that decision. But these are the funds that you can invest in um, from life strategy. Here, it's a combination. Actually, let's pick one of them if we click on that and you can do this um, in your spare time as well. So what it does is it gives you an over overview. This is how much a unit of this fund is sold sold off so you can actually click on that this is the price of one share in the fund based on the value of its underlying investments now this price changes daily right and that's the allocation you've got 80 percent there and 20 percent there and this is the ongoing charge fees so for every fund that you invest in on vanguard there is an associated ongoing um, charge in percentage that is how much it's going to charge you annually out of a risk of one to seven this is three which is a fairly low risk right so if you scroll down um, the entry charge is none exit charge is none so you can buy and sell at any time no exit or entry fees um, because this is a life strategy De dealing deadline is 9 a.m. Again, read all of that information. So here we come, it gives you a graph of past performance. Again, remember, when you are investing, there is no guarantees. The fact that uh, stock of a particular company is 100 pounds today, there is nothing that says it's gonna be 100 pounds tomorrow. It could be 150 pounds tomorrow, it could be 50 pounds tomorrow. So you have to factor in your risk level and that's why here we see the risk level here is actually three out of seven. So it tells you the percentage net asset value um, per each of this time frame, right? So again, if you had invested 10,000 pounds as of May 2015, as of somewhere around today or as of May 2020, your 10,000 pounds will now be 12,706 pounds. Again, so these are the things that you can find out here. If I scroll back here, price and performance, it gives you the dates. As I mentioned before, the, the price of this changes per day and that's it there. It tells you the percentage by which it's gone up and high, 52 week high, low. It gives you all of that information. Again, here's the graph of the current. So from the 28th July to 29th July, this is what has happened. And this is how much the unit price from 169 now it's gone to 170. You can change it one month, three months, 12 months and see what has happened over that period of time. Now, again, past performance, not a guarantee. So let's move on to portfolio data. So here are the 
allocation of this particular fund. So you've got bond. So this lifestyle, sorry, not lifestyle, this life strategy funds, <laughs> that's interesting. This life strategy funds, it's a combination of bonds, um, index funds, ETFs, everything. It's a mixture of all of that. So you've got um, global index bond fund, 19.1%, FTSE, FTSE is just Financial Times Stock Exchange. That means that particular, for example, this one says developed world, exactly what it means, but it excludes any UK stock, right? So these are the things you need to find out and you can scroll down and make your decision whether you want to buy it or not. But before we get to whether you want to buy it or not, um, there are some other things you need to know. Again, when an, when an index fund says accumulation or an ETF says accumulation, it means that yes, you're going to get dividends, but that dividend is going to be automatically reinvested for you. So you don't actually get the cash. It's not like an income, right? So, um, so you have accumulation, you've got income. This is accumulation. Whatever dividend that is paid to you, which for most organizations, most companies is quarterly, that gets automatically reinvested for you. So the cost and minimums. So the ongoing charge for this particular one is 0.22%. Again, not bad. In fact, Vanguard is known for its low cost funds. The entry charge, none, as we said before, a one-off payment. So if you were to buy this right now, I ask you, if you start just opening this, the one-off payment here is 500 pounds and you can set up a monthly direct debit. Again, this is minimum of 100 pounds. You can do more than that if you want. If you were to compare this with a similar fund here, this similar fund, the average here is going to cost you 1,500, but this costs you just around about maybe three something and you'll be saving 1,143 pounds. So this makes for a good investment. All right. So before we proceed, there are some um, information that you need to know before you make your decision. And we go to overview, we scroll down here, you've got the key investor information document. And with this key information document, key investor information document, again, these are, it tells you about the investment policy of this particular fund. It tells you the risk reward profile. Again, the lower the risk, the lower the returns, the higher the risk, the higher the returns. So here the, the risk level is three. So that's pretty low. And here it tells you about the charges again, which is something that we've gone through. Past performance, I already mentioned that as well. Again, this is something that is handy and you can have a look at that. So if we come back to this, you can look at the prospectus and also you will find out more information about this fund. Again, um, about Vanguard's policy, again, about risk. All of those information are there, but the whole idea for this is for you to be able to make uh, a quick decision based on the information that is presented for you. So you will find um, the financial document of the organizations within the stock here on the site, right? You've got the long version, you've got the short version, and you can simply make decision based on those information and off you go. So that is life strategy for you. And you've got target retirement funds. Again, exactly the same thing, um, simple and straightforward right there. And then I'm gonna come back up here and I will show you the index and active funds. So index funds are passive funds and um, the active funds basically are traded on your behalf. So you've got an a manager, an investment manager that actually picks the funds for you and trades on your behalf. And that makes that expensive, the ongoing charge, more expensive than an index fund. So if you look at this particular one, for example, it says active. Vanguard is so good that they've made it so clear that you can actually see it. That's active and it's 0.48%. Now, if you go down, you will see equity. So you've got FTSE developed Europe, X UK. When you say X UK, it means it excludes UK stocks or UK companies, but it's an index fund and the ongoing charge for that is 0.12%. This is 100% equity. So this are all 100% equity, 100% shares, no bond included. So again, you can scroll down and look at the ones uh, that you would like to invest in, or if you're not sure, you can just pick the lifestyle keep saying lifestyle. <laughs> you can just pick the life strategy, right? And that encompasses various um, ETFs, bonds, 
and that helps you put your money in the right place. And again, these investments are like five, 10 year, 15 year investment. And regardless of how the market dips, its highs and lows, it will eventually even out and you will smile eventually after that. So it's a passive way. That's what makes it passive. There is less involvement from you as opposed to an active fund where someone is actively trading on your behalf. Or if you're buying a stock directly from an app like Trading212 where you actively check, okay, what is it like? Do I want to sell? Do I want to buy? You're making constant decisions. Index funds, ETFs are really not like that. They are passive funds. All right, so that is that. So you've got here the FTSE 100. Again, it's similar to the S&P 500, but these are the 100 major Mac with big, biggest market cap in the UK. You've got FTSE 100 index. You've got FTSE UK all shares index. So these are both medium, small, and large market cap trading um, in the UK. And the ongoing charge for that is 0.06%. So you can see that the cost of actually investing this is pretty small, 0.06. For active is 0.48. So let's say, for example, let me show you an ETF and we try to open an account and we go straight into that. All right, so these are the ETFs. And here you've got about 26, equity 18. And this will be, I'll show you from US, the popular S&P 500. Here is the S&P 500. So if you choose to buy that, that is 0.07%. And this will constitute the 500 um, top companies in the, U in the US. 100% equity. The risk level is 5 out of 7. So a little bit more risk here than um, the life strategy we saw. So all you need to do here is to click. You click that. You scroll all the way to the bottom. Invest now. You click on that. It tells you that you've got S&P 500 and it's called VUSA, right? That's the acronym for that or the ticker for that. And you click on continue to purchase. So the moment you do that, it asks you if you're a new customer or if you're an existing customer, if you're an existing customer or investor, you sign in with your username and password. If you're new, then you click on open an account. So if you're doing this for the first time, what you want to do is to click on open an account. Once you've done that, you say start my application. Now you've presented with these four options. So you've got a Vanguard Stocks and Shares ISA, you've got a Vanguard Junior ISA. Now, if you're above the age of 18 or 16, I believe right now, I can remember that. But if you're above that age, then you will need um, Stocks and Share ISA. But if you're below the age of 16, then you are going to be using the Vanguard Junior ISA. Now, if you've got a pension that you want to bring over to Vanguard, that is possible. You just say transfer an account. Or if you want to start your pension with Vanguard, then you can say open an account. The fourth option here is a general account, a general investment account. So let's say you've um, used your ISA allowance, which is £20,000 for the financial year, then you can just open an account here. But be mindful that you are subject to um, income tax on this particular one when you hit the threshold. I believe it's about £2,000 per year up. That's on top of your personal um, allowance um, that you've got, which is £12,500 for the year. All right. So you can also transfer an account, which I've done. I actually transferred uh, my FTSE um, Hundred all share from Agri's Lansdowne because I, I found out that the cost was way higher than what um, Vanguard was charging. So I brought it over. And but in your case, all you would have to do is open an account. So we do that. We click and open an account, and it's going to ask us for some information which we would have to agree to. Here are the key features: as ISA declaration, privacy policy. We agree to that. Again, please read that um, so you know what you're agreeing to. Proceed. And once we proceed, it presents us with, please choose how you like to invest your ISA. <clears throat> so you've got the blended funds where we talked about the target requirements. We talked about the life strategy. We talked about equity funds, right? So if we click on equity funds, we are interested in the S&P 500 because that was what we clicked on. So we just scroll down and we look for S&P 500. It should be somewhere under US. 
So that's USA. We've got S&P 500 UCITS ETF. So here we say, there, so it's going to ask you for two things. Remember, the whole idea of this, it's a passive income. It's something that you should be doing monthly. You have a fixed set of um, figure or amount that you want to be investing monthly. So here, right now to open it, let's say you want to invest. I don't know. I can't remember what the minimum was on S&P 500, but let's say 100. Then, okay, so it says the minimum amount here is 500. So that has to be 500. Then we come right to the regular monthly payment. That should be 100 pounds as minimum. So that's fine. It gives you right at the bottom here. So you've got an ISA allowance. Remember, we are opening an ISA, a stocks and share ISA, that account. That is what we are opening. So the standard allowance per year is 20,000 pounds. Now, out of that 20,000 pounds, we are investing 500 pounds straight away. So that deducts that from that. So for the rest of the year, we've got 19,500. It's not taking account of this 100 pounds yet because this is something that is going to start from the next month from today. All right, so we've got one phone in the basket. We click on next. Here it's going to ask you for your name. You click whatever title, your legal first name, last name, email, confirm it, your national insurance number. I can't do this again because I've already done one for myself. You can only have one account um, per year and you basically have to fill in your information. So I've just made this up, right? None of this is legit apart from my email, which is of course the email for this channel. And I've made up the NI number. So if that's your NI number, I'm sorry, that was just made up. And also what, you've just need to, what you just need to do after that is click on next. Once you click on next, it tells you to create a username, create a password, um, make sure the credentials meet this conditions. And once you're done, you just click on next. It asks you for your bank statement, right? I don't want to create another one because I already got one. You do that, create, click on next. It asks you for your bank statement. That is where it's going to deduct the monthly payment from and also this particular 500 pounds. That's where it's going to deduct from. And once that is done, boom, all job is done. So come the following month, you're going to see 100 pounds deducted on the particular date that you have chosen. Um, and if you choose to make changes to that 100 pounds, if you say, okay, I'll, instead of 100 pounds, I want to be putting 150 pounds or 200 pounds, I believe you have to give Vanguard eight day notice or 10 working day notice, something like that. So um, that allows them to make all the necessary admin changes and with your bank and all of that stuff. And it's as simple as that. It shows you your own account and you can see how much you've invested. You can see by how much your investment has gone up or gone down. You can see the percentage. And those are the things that you can begin to see. In fact, if you've got cash left in your account, so let's say out of this 500 pounds or out of this 100 pounds that you're gonna be investing next month, you now upload. And that's another thing you can do. You can basically transfer money from your account even besides this 100, 100 pounds and just let it sit in your account so that maybe at a particular point you would trade with that money. That is also possible. That's all you need to know about opening an account with Vanguard and buying an index fund or buying an ETF or a life strategy fund. And it's as simple as that. And if you're yet to subscribe to this channel, please, please do click on the subscribe button below and give me a thumbs up for this video. I would really appreciate that. It helps people to know that this video is actually of great benefit and they can consume this same information as well. And do not forget to click on the notification bell so that you can be aware when I pop the next video. And until the next time, I'll speak to you soon. You have a great day.